Hello everyone and welcome back to Ed Research Clinics. This is our research publishing series and today we are going to continue our article publishing series on original article. So this is the second part of this original article writing series and first part we discuss the beginning of the article as well as the results section and today we are going to discuss discussion and conclusion part of the original article. So we have already seen what an original article is. We have seen the structure in the previous video. If you have not seen it, do have a look. Today we will dive into how to write a good discussion and conclusion for the original article. Just a quick recap, the structure, six parts, introduction, material and methods, observation and results, discussion, conclusion and references. So let us start with discussion. What is discussion? Basically, it is a story in your article that should flow naturally from known to unknown. Okay, so if your topic is say a surgery for acute necrotizing pancreatitis, you can start with what is known about the topic and then go towards the unknown that your study is trying to show and convert the unknown to known with your study results. Okay, so if you understand this line, it is very easy to write the discussion. Do not repeat the lines or content of introduction in discussion. This is very commonly seen when we review the articles. What is written in introduction, the same thing is repeated in discussion before going ahead. So don't do that because it affects the reader's attention. Key points to cover in the discussion is what we are going to see here. And it is very important that you have a structure and flow to the discussion. So we'll provide you some help and assistance on how you can have a structure or flow in the discussion. So now there are two ways to begin a discussion and understand it's the first two paragraphs that decide if the reader is going to read your article and benefit from it. So there are two ways in which we can write a discussion. One way is that after your observation and results in the discussion, give a summary of the results of your study in five to six lines or a single paragraph and that becomes the first paragraph of discussion. Now this is a bit of an advanced way of writing a discussion but if you can manage this your rest of the discussion is simply the comparison and contrast of data with published literature to reach valid outcomes and this is actually a very good discussion because you are sticking to facts from published literature as well as from your study outcomes. The other way to write a discussion is very simple that you start with the definition or introduction to the disease or procedure that you are studying. For example, if you are studying surgery for diverticulitis, you can start your discussion with the surgical options of diverticulitis or you can start as outcomes of surgical options of diverticulitis. Very important to know that you need to jump right into the topic, okay? You don't need to write what is diverticulitis if your article is on outcomes of surgery, things like that. So jump right to the topic. So for both these examples, I can give you some different articles that we have written. This is one article where we had data of 17 years on multimodality management, recurrence patterns and long-term outcomes of neuroendocrine neoplasm. So in this article, we have written it as per the first part. That is, we have given our results first and then we have gone into the details of the discussion. If you want to understand this style of writing, you will have to read up this article. The article DOI is there at the top, so you can find the article. But here, if you can see, we have written that Japanese are usually indolent, present, late, non-functioning in our series. So we are giving our results first and then we are discussing a structured discussion on the basis of our results and its comparison to the other article. On the other hand, if you see this example, which is on infected pancreatic necrosis, you can see that we have started with Ne pancreatic necrosis or acute necrotizing pancreatitis and from there we have gone into the surgical intervention and the outcome. So in the first five lines only 
we have reached the key area of the article that is the outcome analysis. So this is how you need to make the discussion and the beginning of it the most interesting so that we read the article and so that your readers grasp the key points from your article and the discussion. So how to do this? The first half is very important that when you take data from existing references, compare it with your results, okay? The flow can be in these headings. So if it's a disease-based article, you can have the demography first. Compare demography in your data versus prevalent data. Look at clinical features, diagnosis, management, outcomes, follow-up and survival data. If your paper is on outcomes, you can directly start with management and then go towards outcomes, discuss the outcomes in more detail. So, but in this line of flow, is what will help you in structuring your discussion properly. Going towards the other half of the discussion, this is the area where you focus on your key points, okay? Usually I say that don't have more than two or three key points that are relevant to a study. So for any study or any paper that you want to write, the usual key points are two or three. If you discuss all the points in your data like a thesis, then the readers get confused. So do not discuss all points in detail. The other half is limited to discussion of only the key results of your study in comparison to existing evidence to highlight the outcomes of your study, okay? If you follow this, you will not digress from the topic and you will not overburden the reader with too much information. It is very important that if you can create visual impressions of your data, the readers find it very easy and interesting. So you can have a table to compare key points with references. For example, say an article on robotic surgery on pancreas, you can have your outcomes vis-a-vis -vis similar paper and outcomes and you can make a table of it. Or if your article is on how to manage a particular disease, then you can create an algorithm based on the topic and this algorithm can then drive the discussion. So each point in your algorithm in sequence becomes your discussion. So table and algorithm become very easy ways of writing a structured discussion. Focus of the title will form the focus of the discussion. This is very important. Like I said, if your article is on outcome analysis, if it's on a drug, then start with the drug. If it's on how to manage a disease, start with the disease. So title should be very relevant to the discussion and the study. And focused discussion is what drives the study towards the conclusion. Very important to not have errors in grammar, okay? Never copy and paste any lines from an existing article because that amounts to plagiarism. Never write the title of a reference paper. So if you are quoting a reference paper, do not write the title of that paper verbatim. If you do that, it is plagiarism because more than three or four words in same sequence as another article is what is basically plagiarism. Very simple to understand. So don't do that. Do a grammar check three or four times. Never copy and paste any lines. So for example, this is the paper that we saw on infected pancreatic necrosis. The title is Outcome Analysis of VARD or Videoscopic Assisted Retroperitoneal Debridement. So it's a surgery and we are looking at outcome analysis. So a very simple algorithm is what decides what we have done, so you can see that the ward has been performed and then what happens and what we have done. So the entire discussion is driven by this algorithm. So if you read this paper, the entire discussion is driven by a single algorithm. And you can see it here, the complications are labeled, the way how the complications are managed has been labeled resolution, not resolution, new collections, MA enable not. So all the options that are possible or all the outcomes that are possible after VARD are created in a single algorithm. And this is what drives the discussion in the article.
Coming to other points, a very important point in discussion is limitations of the study. Don't feel sad that your study has limitations. All studies have limitations of some point. Some common limitations when you are doing new original articles or new studies is a single center study is a limitation. Most of the data is retrospective and small number of cases. Other important component of the article is recommendations. Remember that the recommendations have to be based on your study. It is the findings of your study which give you recommendations. So you don't need to give recommendations from your literature review. And two to three key practice changing recommendations are more than enough. A summary of the article is very important. So if you have started your article with summary, which is the first way of writing the discussion, then this summary part can be skipped. But if you have started writing your discussion in the second way, that is definition or introduction, then a summary in five to six lines to highlight the key points of your study are very good, but it should not be same as conclusion. Now, some important points on when you are quoting other study, the author name needs to be capitalized, very simple to understand. Always mention the number of patients in that study and the type of study. Is it a RCT? Okay. Is it prospective, retrospective? Is it systematic review? So give type of study, give number of patients, year of publication and place of study. And remember that you need to cover only the relevant points from that paper in not more than 100 to 150 words. Sometimes what we see while reviewing articles is that you have created two, three paragraphs of a single reference. It does not, that, it does not work that way. Not more than 100 to 150 words from another article are enough to summarize that article and provide you with a comparison point. Okay, So cover only the relevant points from your reference and include all these points. Say an article by Desai et al. at Leelawati Hospital and Research Center wherein they performed a study on outcome analysis of diverticulitis using laparoscopic surgery. Around 50 patients were taken from that study and what they showed is, right, something like that. So it should not be more than 100 to 150 words. Again, when we see an article, this is an example of limitation. So limitation, recommendation, very important parts of your article you can have you can see here the limitations are single center data retrospective nature loss to follow up in some patients and small number of cases however we have given some recommendation also how further studies can be designed so that is how you can give your discussion a structure going to conclusion the Probably the most important part, but also the most easy part to write in your paper is the conclusion. This is because if you have given a very clear cut aim and objective in your title, primary and secondary objectives in your article at the beginning, the conclusion is simply an answer to your aim and objectives. Basically, final thoughts in a meeting, final thoughts in a paper is what a conclusion is. So for each aim, primary and secondary objective of a study, add one line as an answer and that becomes your entire conclusion. Remember that conclusion should not be same as the summary paragraph. Repetition of lines put a very bad impression in the minds of the reviewers as well as the readers about the article. So do not repeat lines. The reply to title or an answer to a question that is raised in the title can also be the conclusion. A strong and relevant recommendation, if it is there from your study, will also form a part of the conclusion. So if you consider these three, four options, it would be very easy to write around five to six lines. Conclusions, not more than 150 to 200 words. So don't write a very lengthy conclusion. It should be only three to four points that are very relevant to your study. If you want to see an example on this entire article, we are looking at outcomes, recurrence patterns, as well as multimodality management. And the conclusion directly goes into outcomes. Okay, long-term survival. 
then we have talked on different diseases and how they are managed so multimodality management part is covered you can see debulking surgeries cytoreduction palliative surgery you can see prrt and you can see recurrence pattern so the three headings in the title and because it's progress over 17 years the long term survival so the title itself has created this conclusion by means of the data from our study if you wish to read more on the original article or you need templates so these are some of the templates that we have provided in our book a step by step guide to scientific research publishing this book is available on Amazon Kindle for free for Kindle Unlimited readers. So you can have a look at this book. Templates are available. All this data is available and a lot of information is available on discussion and conclusion writing as well. So you can have a look at the book as well. Thank you.